All right, I'm back. I'm going to do something a bit different here. I'm going to start talking about some classic albums. I haven't talked about classic albums yet or have just done classic album reviews, but I'm going to start doing that now, especially since to my Beatle people out there, there really are no Beatles releases. Pure McCartney? I'm kind of hesitant to get it. Maybe I'll ask for it for Christmas. What I want to talk about today, on my first installment of classic albums, I'm going to be talking about some albums, some famous albums, but also some albums that I don't think get attention, and should get attention. Some of these albums you don't see on the great albums list of all time. You, you see a lot of the typical ones. I'm going to talk about some albums that, to me, are important to me, and are great albums for me, and maybe could enlighten you as well. The one I want to talk about really today is that I'm a big Paul Revere and the Raiders fan. I, going back to when I used to grab a hold of my dad's albums and to play on my Winnie the Pooh Sears record player. I wanted some records to play when I was younger. And then when I got a better portable record player, I still wanted some records to play. So getting into Paul Revere and the Raiders based on my dad's albums was just, you know, it was a world opening up to me. And unlike my father, I would dig deeper into something when I loved it and I had passion for it. And one of the albums that I really wanted to get by Paul Rivera and the Raiders was one that came out in 1970. And it's this fine album right here, Collage. Notice there's no Paul Revere and, as far as the band name. Mark... Lindsay, I think, is one of the great talents in the rock era. Songwriters, producers, f f best, one of the best frontmen of all time. I put him up there with Jagger as one of the best rock and roll frontmen. He, they don't get their due, Paul Revere and the Raiders. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? What's going on? But they get their due with me. The first lineup with, with, with Mark L Lindsay... Paul Revere, Drake, Fang, and Smitty. And then the second lineup, which I think for me, the musicianship with the, the second lineup was just awesome. Keith Allison, uh, Joe Carrero on drums, and Fred Weller. And that lineup, Mark Lindsay actually took into the studio because their first producer, Terry Melcher, was using the great L.A. Sideman a lot of the time. But Collage and Mark had a real detailed piece on his website about the making of it. 1970 came, he had some solo success, but with the Raiders, he wanted to take them into a hard rock vein and get into the 70s with dignity. They were one of those bands that were unfairly pegged as bubblegum. I have no idea why. Mark had a direction for Paul Revere and the Raiders. That was always there. I don't know how this band could be tagged as bubblegum. But there was a bit of a struggle. I mean, when the Raiders began, Mark handled the music, Paul Revere handled the business. But it became, from everything I've read, interviews with Mark that I've read, it became a struggle with him and Paul. Paul would have loved to have been on and kept being on, on 16 magazine from everything that I saw. Mark was beyond that. Mark was beyond the pre-revolutionary outfits. He wanted to get beyond that, get beyond the the dance moves that they used to do, bring them into a new era. In this interview I read just recently, I think it was 2012, it's out there, just type in Mark Lindsay Paul Revere and the Raiders and Collage on Google. You'll get a whole list of recent interviews about this for the last couple of years. On Collage, let me show you the cover on this baby. Nice unipack sleeve with the lyrics. He really experimented. He really experimented with different sounds, heavy guitars, but also there's a lot of time spent on the production, but the songs are good. A great cover of Laura Nero's Save the Country from her New York Tenderberry album. Great cover of that with a beautiful brass arrangement. And Mark's vocals on that, 
yeah, like I told you, he is one of the best rock frontmen of all time. I, hands down, in my opinion, him and Jagger and Daltrey and Plant, he's he is should be included with those guys, in my opinion. The, so many great tracks on here. I mean, the the thing twice about telling a young person to really get out of rock and roll. Beautiful Dr. Fine, a rockin' song, Just 17, which was the, the big single from the album, which, it's a song about a guy in a hotel room finding an underage, finding an underage, underage girl, you know, rock and roll, rock and roll to its core. Before my eyes there was an angel, and I said, do you want to come inside? She said, I'm just 17, but she looked fine, and I'm just 17. Wow. And then later on in the song, though, unlike a Stone song, crime doesn't pay. The narrator gets arrested. The musicianship from Allison, Carrero, and, and Weller is great. The production by Lindsay is great. Th this could have been a great direction for them. Future Patti Smith guitarist, Lenny Kay in Rolling Stone, gave it a five-star review. If you could dig up that review, it's just incredible. But, it's their lowest charting album. Their lowest charting album. Now, they were able to save themselves with Indian Reservation, but that's another story. In an interview that I read with Mark, he said it didn't help that Revere, and this was when, when Paul was still alive, he said it didn't help that R Revere told everybody in sight that he hated the album. Um, I think it's a brilliant album. Production-wise, there's a lot of things that he's doing. The guitar solo on Just 17 by Fred Weller is also played in unison with a soprano sax. So you're trying to listen to it. Is it, is it a double-tracked Guitar? Is it not double tracked? Is it a guitar? Is it a sax? But I find I f find little production techniques like that interesting. And there's a, a, a groan on just seventeen. Is it a Hammond organ? You find out it's like four different instruments run through a Leslie speaker of a Hammond organ playing the same note. There are little there are techniques like that on here. The whole album is segued together. Every song is segued. Not like what the Moody Blues did with segways, just doing a simple crossfade as one song is fading out. These are our segues on the realm of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, which hadn't come out yet. Like every transition to each song was planned out in advance. Um, when I heard this album, I was blown away still am blown away I call this a masterpiece one of these undeserved uh, one of these underrated masterpieces these albums that should have gotten more recognition but haven't I would love for there to be a good CD release of it it's been unavailable on CD Lindsay had briefly released it on CD on his website back in the 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 mid 2000s I think it was and I didn't buy it on CD, I sought out an actual vinyl copy of it, and I, f I found it, and it's in great condition. Collage, I really love it, and I agree with the statement I heard Lindsay say that he should have gone back to Clive Davis after this and said, hey Clive, that was a tra transition album, let me do another one, go deeper in this vein, and then a third time if it didn't work out and say, Clive, this is it, if it doesn't work out, I'm throwing in the towel. I really think they should have gone deeper in this, but because it wasn't a hit, in interviews I, I read with Mark, I think he lost interest in it because the album wasn't a success and Paul Revere himself was bad-mouthing the album. Uh, I don't think Paul Revere should have bad-mouthed anything because Lindsay brought the band so many riches. Every album Paul Revere and the Raiders had done has 
has gotten a lot of gems on them, a lot of gems on them. But that is a masterpiece. Collage is a masterpiece. I can't get enough of that album. If you can get your hands on a copy of it, I urge you to get your hands on a copy of Collage by, by the Raiders. That's another thing I might add. That was a clear-cut decision to drop Paul Revere and from the name of the group because that was just out, and they insisted on just calling it The Raiders for a band name. Brilliant move. Brilliant move. I wish more people heard it at the time. Hopefully more people will be digging that album now. Go out and get a copy of it at your local used record store, if they have it. 